moving on to episode 3, carrying the name Transformations. I don't like where this is going. The episode opens with the girls hanging out at the cusp of the day's everything hour. Sage and Rosemary have yet to decide their focus for the free period, which leaves Sage feeling anxious. Cartography, levitation, or should I stick to something practical like astromancy? Breathe, Sage. We've got the week to decide. You'll find something that floats your goat. There are too many options. Might this be a place for some self-reflection? Does Sage have to look inward? Ponder about what she truly wishes to accomplish as a guardian? Make some tough decisions? A mini arc of sorts for the episode? Nah, this is High Guardian Spice we are watching. For all her spassing, Sage just walks to the potions lab, starts brewing, does her magic -y stuff, and the issue is never mentioned again. Meanwhile, Rosemary is not worried in the slightest. Airhead that she is? In fact, she is so preoccupied with trying to kill a fly with her sword, a fly with her sword, that she suddenly forgets how to grip her trusted tool of potential manslaughter and flings the thing across the yard, hitting a perfectly placed rock that's just there, in the middle of the otherwise neat and tidily kept garden, breaking the pommel of the weapon. And at that exact moment, Fime saunters to the scene, roasting Rosemary as reliably as ever. Nice one. First lesson is how to take pride in your weapons. Listen, you pointy- I like to think that she was patiently waiting in the shadows the whole time, waiting for the time when, and not if, Rosemary screws up. If only the other girls were this sharp and punctual. Don't you have somewhere else to be? Maybe haunting an old clock tower? Huh, you've been working on those comebacks. What? huh What does that even mean? Haunting an old clock tower? Is Fime a ghost? Are you saying she's a bat? A gargoyle? What was that line? Come now, Fime. You don't have to humor this wishy-washy would-be sorceress. You are better than that. That comeback was shit. Time! You're on your way to class, yeah? I was just telling Sage how you chose enchanted marksmanship for everything hours. Yeah, but I'm on my way to archery. But you just said that... How? Why? Huh? It's the everything hours, and you just said you chose enchanted marksmanship. Why are you heading to archery? Do the students have everything hours at separate times? No, that can't be the case. We see Fime later on just milling about her own beeswax, clearly not in the middle of class. This dialogue, this world building, it can't even remain consistent from one spoken line to the next. I'd actually like to introduce something here. It's the patented Lobster Hero's first rule of High Guardian Spice Analysis. You can take any moment from the show, any line of dialogue, and I guarantee that it is contradicted somewhere else in the show. Turn that into a drinking game, and try to see how long you'll last till you are desperate for a liver transplant. I've ruined the one thing that matters to me. Okay, yes. Fucking finally. This is what I've been waiting for. A perfect opportunity for Rosemary to grow as a person. Her foolhardy ways will inevitably get someone hurt. She just broke her mother's precious sword, injured her legacy. She must realize that being a guardian is something to be taken seriously. Life won't just accommodate her forever. It's time to leave her sheltered, selfish life behind and embrace the responsibility that comes with the title of guardian. This must be what sets Rosemary on a path of bettering herself, right? Some honest to goodness character development at long last. I mean, the writers wouldn't be so utterly tone deaf and clueless that they would actually absolve Rosemary, even after she showcases time and time again how irresponsible and reckless she is and are you fucking kidding me? The sword was already broken all along. Rosemary's mother broke the thing on a mission long time ago. And it's fixed just like that. Sure, that's fine. That's just fantastic. Why should there be any need for character development? 
Why should anyone face actual consequences for their actions? Proper life lessons clearly aren't on the list of this show's priorities. Obviously, I'm the dumb one for expecting anything more. Fuck me, basic setup and payoff, Jesus fucking Christ. All we get from this is Rosemary activating her flashback mode. Her mother quote, teaches her how to hold her weapon, doing a demonstrably shitty job at it. We learn nothing new about their relationship, nor about Lavender, the mother, as a character. And the lesson itself is as bare bones as anyone could possibly write. Find your center, the weapon is an extension of you, it'll give you strength. The show has nothing of its own to offer. We know nothing about Lavender's philosophy as a warrior. What are her values? Her fighting style? Is she a fierce bruiser? A calculating tactician? A noble samurai type? We get nothing. She has no insight to give to her child. The whole thing gives the sense that the author didn't even really want to write a lesson. So they just cobbled together the most basic set of platitudes possible. Lavender is a strong independent woman. And her twerp offspring will follow in her vague footsteps. And that's all we need to know. Something of note, and the only sort of interesting part in all this, is that Lavender purposefully left the sword in Rosemary's care. Implying that she knew beforehand that she was going to disappear soon. And yet, this fact is never pointed out by anyone. And to hell with this sword by the by. Aside from the obvious, the fact that it's overly decorated and fragile for a tool that's meant for actual combat, and that it is far too weighty to be handled by Rosemary, the name is utterly lame. This sword was given to me by my mother. She, the sword, has a name. Flowering Thorn. Flowering Thorn. Flowering Thorn? How long did it take you to come up with that? Oh yeah, my OC is so cool, her name is Rosemary, and her sword is called Flowering Thorn. Please don't steal. I know that your well of inspiration is as deep as a puddle, but come on, you could at least try. Call it the Quartz Thorn, or the Spice Slicer, or something like that. A bit of flavor, effort. And while we are on the subject of priceless heirlooms getting nicked and cracked... Ah, must be reinforced. Uh, how often do you take it in for a tune-up? <sighs> Never, dimwit. A sword's immutable. <laughs> She's right. It gets nicked, the hilt can break, but the metal's enchanted, so, uh... <laughs> so there's a spell that can keep a blade flawless for all eternity. Or at least for a good number of years? Is that old magic? New magic? Who cast a spell? If there's no cost, then why isn't every weapon enchanted like this? Why wouldn't the person making the spell cover the entire weapon instead of just the blade? Can the spell be cast on any object? Can it be used on people? Why isn't everyone walking around with an invisible perma shield protecting them? It's never stated that the spell only works on metal or such, so... Like I said, first law of High Guardian Spice. I'd like to thank everyone for sticking around and listening to these rants. All the comments and kudos are much appreciated. And if you haven't already, consider drop kicking the like button and subscribing for more. Most of the people watching these videos aren't subscribed, so... You know... The button is right there, it'll only take a second. And a very special thanks goes to my supporters on Patreon. And an extra special thank you to my 10 euro patron Wyland. If you'd like to join these fine people, or check out my other creative stuff, all the links are down below. Take care everyone, and I'll see you all in the next one.